Welcome to Lost Culture. You want to stop destination for everything pop culture. My name is Aston, and I'm going to be your host for today's episode of Lost Movie News. Now, before we get started, like everybody, you know, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. Make sure you share it if you want your friends to see. And as always, thank you guys for tuning in. So let's jump into the first story of the day. Our first story of the day is going to be Thor Ragnarok. Thor 3. We finally got a synopsis. We got a quick behind-the-scenes look. Um, there's really just a picture of um, Chris Hamburg. He's fully suited up. You see, he's talking to the director. A couple um, crew members in the background, not really doing too much. But it's a pretty cool, like, not really, pretty simple picture. It doesn't show too much. It doesn't really have an idea of what's really going on in the picture. I think it's more just to show people, like, look, we're out here, we're working. So we see the synopsis I'm going to read out for you guys right now. In Marvel Studios' Thor Ragnarok, Thor is imprisoned on the other side of the universe without his mighty hammer. And he finds himself in a race against time to get back to Asgard to stop Ragnarok. The destruction of his home world and the end of Asgardian civilization at the hands of an all-powerful new threat, the ruthless Hela. But first he must survive a dead deadly gladiatorial contest that pits him against his former ally and fellow Avenger, the Incredible Hulk. And that's it. That's all we find out. So obviously, Hell is behind Ragnarok. We see his only way to get back home, he has to go through the Hulk. So it sounds like they're actually doing this, um, um, like Planet Hulk. And it's cool to see that. Like, like, I can't wait to see this movie. I'm actually really excited. I don't remember if I put this in my top five or not, but I am really excited. Like, I'm a, I'm a big Marvel fan. I love going out to see Marvel fans. I've actually enjoyed the last two Thor movies, number one more than two, but I have enjoyed both of them. Um, I'm definitely gonna check this film out. Like I said, um, we got Hella being paid by um, being played by Kate Beckinsale. The movie is expected out on November third of this year. I'm um, like I said, whew, Disney's gonna have a big. <laughs> Disney's gonna have a big year again this year. Oh my god! Yeah, episode eight and Thor, uh, and um, Thor, a couple of yeah, Guardians two on uh, Thor, and I'm excited for all these Disney movies, and I can't wait to see this film. And it's really cool. Like I'm really glad they're releasing this stuff and starting to um, market because we haven't seen anything for this movie. We know they've been Disney's been focused on Rogue One. Rogue One's out the door now. Um, Start to focus on Thor, be like Guardians. So I'm expecting to see more Guardians come out. And I'm going to go check this film out. Like I said, I'm a big Tom Hiddleston fan. I'm a big Chris Hemsworth. Um, I like Kate Beckinsale here and there. But for the most part, I'm going to see this movie. There's no questions asked. I'm a big fan of this film. And I can't wait to see it. Now, moving on to our next story, the second story of the day, is The Predator. So the Predator released some casting information. Um, we found out they're actually in Trevante Rhodes from Moonlight. They're adding him to the film. We see he's actually going to be, got a little description of his character. He's actually going to be playing a special forces person who's best friends with, Bo um, with Boyd Hellbrook. So, I mean, Hallbrook. So these two are going to be best friends. So it's going to be see how that turns out. We know Olivia Munn is also connected to the film. We don't really know. I, I don't know what role she's playing yet. Um, it might have came out, but I haven't like, figured out what role they're going to play yet. But um, I'm actually a pretty big Predator fan. I am actually am. I actually like Predator vs. Alien. The first one. The second one, not so much. Maybe because of Sonia Lathan. I'm a, I love Sonia Lathan. I think she's beautiful. Um, I watch anything she's in, um, and it's really cool to see, like, we haven't really seen anything for this film yet, we, I think they released some, like, pictures of the Predator, but besides that, we haven't seen it, I don't think it actually wasn't pictures, I think it was just a picture with a bunch of red lights, so, that could be, like, we haven't really seen anything, but, I'm definitely gonna, like, I don't know if I'm really gonna check it out, like, I'm probably gonna check it out, I am a pretty big um, fan of the the Predator films before. Um, I like get to the chopper now, but my, it's a horrible. Yeah, I know it's a horrible Arnold, <laughs> Arnold impersonation.
But it's a really cool, like, I actually do like Predator. I like, like, the way he was set up in the, in the old Predator films. Like, he's invisible and everything. How he's, like, a predator. And not so much as he's out on here only hunting aliens and everything. And the humans got in the way of how they're just testing themselves. I like the fact how he was a hunter. He's out there on, like, these hunts and everything. It's pretty cool to see that. I actually enjoy this. Now, that's all we have for this story. Moving on to our next story. We got New Mutants. Now, I'm a big fan of the X-Men universe, but there's a lot of like questionable things going on with Fox right now. Is Gambit coming out? Are we rebooting the X-Men universe? When and why and how? Because Deadpool is a great um, storyline right now. Even though it does not tie into the current X-Men movies, Deadpool is great. So I'm thinking if they reboot the whole X-Men universe, they would have to reboot Deadpool, in my opinion. But maybe not. Maybe they'll find some way around it. But we got Logan coming out. They're, it's expected to reboot after Logan. And I just don't know how this is going to work. Because now they're saying New Mutants is coming. Well, we knew New Mutants was coming. But New Mutants are coming. And we find out that through um, Anna Taylor, Joy, we find out through her interview that James McAvoy is coming back to play Professor X. So McAvoy back, I know you remember back like a year ago, Jennifer Lawrence said, oh, if I don't come back, McAvoy and Fassbender are coming up. We kind of make a promise to each other. And I was thinking about like, hey, like one, like one monkey don't stop the show. I don't, I don't know, like Jennifer, like if, just because you don't come back don't mean that fast bitter and McAvoy is gonna mess up their money just because you not coming back. Um, it just didn't make sense to me, but I'm glad to hear that McAvoy is actually going to be in the film, even though we don't know if Macy Williams is going to be in there or even Anna Taylor Joy is going to be in there. Um, they're just talking and they found out, like, hey, um, I'm in talks, I haven't really signed a contract or anything, but McAvoy is coming, and McAvoy is going to be back for sure, and that's crazy that they were like that they were let something like that slip instead of like letting it be out. Cause no one knew if he was coming back yet. No one. So if Macko would come back, I'm pretty sure Fassbender coming back. I don't know if Jennifer Lawrence is going to come back because in that days of future past, what is the last one? Oh, Apocalypse. She kind of like zombie walked through that whole film. Like she slept walked through that whole film. Like I could have went in and played her parts for her. We could just CGI Jennifer Lawrence on top of me and we could have got this movie popping, like straight up. I could have did Jennifer Lawrence's role for her and we could just CGI me into Jennifer Lawrence. Hey, but it's still, like, obviously it's still coming out. We got Josh Boone directing and I want to see how this turns out. I really want to see how this turns out, what we're actually going to do. Are we actually going to reboot the universe and how is New Mutants going to be? Is New Mutants going to be a new leaving point for the reboot or what? That's questions we still need to figure out. Uh, we know when it comes to Fox, continuity is not a thing. They really do not care about continuity. They are recast the individual with no problem, bring a whole new character in with no problem. Hey, Fox loyalty is to the money. If it make money, it makes sense. They do not care about continuity. But I would like to see how it turns out, though. I still would like to see that. Like, even if they do recast people, it really doesn't matter to me. I think... Um, that I don't think Mystique should have been playing such a big role. I understand they had Jennifer Lawrence, so they had to um, utilize her. It makes sense. But she definitely didn't have to be such a big role. I wish they... Yeah. It's... it's yeah. But I actually can't wait for this film to come out. I'm, like I said, I'm a big X-Men fan. I'm a big X-Men fan. So it only makes sense that, we'll, that I'll be there when this film comes out. Now, moving on to our next story of the day, we got Black Panther. So, Black Panther added um, Sterling K. Brown, and he's on, he's just been added to another list of, like, if you're black, you're in this movie. Any black actor in this movie, I'm telling you, you name him, he's in it. We got Michael B. Jordan. We got Lupita Nyong'o. We got Chadwick Boseman. We got Forrest Whitaker, Angela Bassett. If you're black, you're in this film. There's no question about it. No question at all. You're you're going to be in this film if you're black. Um, um, like, I do like the film. Like I did like Black Panther. I love Chadwick Boseman in the last one. He did 
an amazing job. I'm a, I've been a big fan of Michael B. Jordan since The Wire. Um, it's crazy how long I've been a fan of Michael B. Jordan. Like when they killed Wallace, I was kind of sad. Like I miss Wallace. And like, um, and he wasn't even in that many episodes. And I watched The Wire again. Michael B. is a great actor. We got Angela Bassett. I don't remember the last time I actually seen Angela Bassett. I'm trying to think about it. Like, I really don't remember the last time we seen Angela Bassett. But Forrest Whitaker, he's in the Disney uh, family now. We've seen him lately at Saw Gerrera in Rogue One. He did a great job as that. Wasn't, he wasn't in as much as they broadcasted him. I mean, if they advertised him, kind of like a, um, who else did they do that with? Captain Phasma. But it's cool. They definitely did their thing with him. He did a great job. The movie was amazing. If you haven't seen it yet, you should definitely go see it out. That movie was definitely in my top five for last year. You should definitely go check out uh, Rogue One. So with that casting information out the way, our next movie is Triple Frontier. Now, Triple Frontier, I haven't even heard about this movie until today. But apparently this movie has been in development for a while now. And it's had a lot of big names attached to it. from Tom Hanks, Will Smith, Johnny Depp, Leo DiCaprio. Um, and so many people that's been connected to the film that I definitely want to check. There's something about this film that must be good of all these big actors. But at the same note, there's got to be something bad about it that all these big actors are passing up on it. What is wrong with the film that had these guys passing up on it? I do not know, but our new people connected to it is going to be Shannon Tatum and Tom Hardy. It's going to be produced by Paramount, and I definitely love Shannon Tatum. I'm loving Shannon, like, not loving him, but I've been enjoying Shannon Tatum's performances since uh, Step Up, Fighting, or Fight, whatever the movie was called. Um, I actually liked them. Um, Tom Hardy, Dark Knight Rises, like... Tom Hardy has a bunch of great films. What's the film when he played both brothers? I forgot the name of that film. <sighs> or he played two twin brothers. It was a pretty cool like, film. Um, a lot of people didn't like it, but I actually enjoyed that film. Um, I think this is going to be a pretty good movie. It takes place basically... It takes a place um, basically around a river um, where Iguaza and the Piranha River um, basically meet up. And it's like Paraguay, Argentina, and Brazil. These three different areas... Um, it's supposed to be, I forgot what they're called, oh, La Trenta, Frontera, I think Frontera, they called it, it was the name of the little area where everything goes out, it's basically a big crime wave area, where it's pretty hard for the police to basically police, because we have all these different, these three different countries right here, and all these borders, basically, all these crime lords, or crime syndicates, are just traveling back and forth between these three countries, and obviously, each country has their jurisdiction only in their country. So this is the this film is taking place right in that area. I think there's something exciting to be, something to be excited about. Um, this casting kind of reminded me of Savages. I don't know if anybody ever seen Savages. It's about two guys, and they're kind of like doing this weed thing, and then it goes out of control. They start fighting the cartel and stuff. They're all they're sharing this one girl. Pretty good movie. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I definitely tell you to go check out Savages if you haven't seen it. Now, that's really all we have. That casting is all we have for that one. Going on from there, we got episode 8 news. All this information from this film comes from Adam Driver himself. He was doing an interview with Larry King, and this, what he was talking about, like, basically, episode 8 is going, to, is going to basically explore Kylo Ren's humanity a little bit more. They're going to see, we're going to see a different side of, like, of Kylo, see more in depth to WoW why he is the way he is. And this is what Adam Driver had to say about it. I think maybe this is a such a general answer, but you know, humanity, even though it's a very much a blockbuster movie, and I'm aware of that, there was no taking that for granted and that we were forced to be general in The Force Awakens. There was a lot of plot points that we knew were operating in the first one that we get to explain more in the second one to kind of make a, both of them make sense but they um, do kind of feel socially active to me. And George Lucas, originally, a lot of Star Wars was in response to the Vietnam and a lot of what I remember taking, talking about with a Force Awakens director, Abrams, J.J. Abrams. Um, Ryan Johnson was had an idea of terrorism, 
and two sides being morally justified to behave however they wanted to get whatever they thought was absolutely correct. So basically beside of the world went, we seen that these two people, one like Sagra and his like and his people were looked at as terrorists from from the Empire's view to the fact that based for the fact that they were just attacking, causing all this chaos and everything. And the way the reason they were attacking it seems like it seems noble for their cause what they were actually doing from from Saul Guerrero's point of view that he was trying to free his people. He was trying to stop the um where the oppression of all these people, how the empire working, taking all these resources from these planets, is wiping them, like burying them clean, and he like a hero to his people. While at the empire's view, they look like terrorists, and the same thing for the um, empire. They look like terrorists. While Saul Guerrero was like 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 a hero, and. It's crazy that they're spreading that more in episode eight. I feel like it's kind of weird they're gonna rehash the same story twice. But if it works out, I definitely want to see more Kylo. Kylo, he's actually one of my favorite characters from the new Star Wars. I don't know if he's gonna be my favorite overall. I'm still pretty big on Anakin. I watch a lot of Clone Wars, so I I'm a big fan of Anakin. But Kylo might take that position for me. I really enjoy Candace. I mean Kylo's character design. Um, I hope he doesn't get that scar across his face. We have bathroom tanks now. He should be able to fix that. He just go in there for a couple hours. He'll be good. He'll be... So, hope. Sorry about that. Hopefully he doesn't have that scar. But I'm glad to see this. I'm super excited about this. I hope. I, I hope and like wish that we do get to see more of Kylo. I know people who didn't like how like oh it didn't explain much. Then like it's. And it's true, the Force Awakens do do have a lot of like it does have a couple heirs, and at the same time, that's probably because a lot of these um, heirs are fixed up in books, other types of canon, which not every can like my brother isn't as big of a like, I am a big he's a big Star Wars fan. Um he'll watch them like I bought Rebels, so now he actually watches Rebels because I bought it like on iTunes. Then the the canon books I bought a couple audio books so now he's actually listening to them. he won't go out and actively do it himself I was just told him like some of the stuff he watches like, he only watched um he only started watching Rebel because he heard Maul was back once he seen now um, the Maul and Ahsoka fight he fell in love with Ahsoka now he wants to go um read the Ahsoka book so it's crazy that how everything is like how everything is like built in you go in for one character, but you end up liking another character. It takes you to a whole nother point. But the issue is, you have to go to so many different areas just to see these characters, and that sucks. Like I think that's like the biggest issue with Star Wars. You and you come like like Darth Maul. He started off on Episode One. Episode One, he's de he's dead. My brother didn't even like. I talk about Darth Maul all the time. My brother didn't realize Darth Maul was brought back to life until he found out. I think all the hype around his rebels appearance for the, the yeah, for the rebels appearance is when he actually realized, oh, Maul is still alive in the universe, and that's crazy to me. I think it's, you should have to be a super big fan to realize who like maybe he is a smaller character or not. But I feel like to the to the more diehard Star Wars fan, Maul is a big character. My brother, like, he is a casual Star Wars fan. He might maybe a little bit more than casual, because we definitely see every Star Wars film together. No questions asked. Day one, we're there. Um, and it's it's crazy that he had to wait. It took him, what, what, I think two or three seasons, of, almost five years to realize that Darth Maul was alive. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous that these characters, that these big characters, takes these too long to like to learn about them. Um, he never seen the animated Star Wars, so he never got to see Ahsoka. I don't think he ever watched Clone Wars, so he doesn't know anything about Ahsoka. A lot of people's um, gripes, gripes around Ahsoka. He, ne he never had to notice that. He just seen Ahsoka that everybody knows now. And he enjoys her, so that's pretty cool. He's actually talking about going back and seeing other things. I just wish people could see these characters on the big screen. We shouldn't, our favorite characters shouldn't be stuck into these other mediums and things of that nature. 
I just wish these characters were expanded beyond these smaller roles and and how their overall affect the story. Like, uh, there's just so much I can go on a tangent about, about Star Wars, but like I said, at the end of the day, I really am a, tr a true Star Wars fan. I love Star Wars. I just a couple of things that I wish were different. So moving on to our um, to the next story of the day, we have Cars Three. Cars 3 has released a new teaser trailer. I actually enjoyed this trailer. And along with that, Empire Magazine got a couple exclusive images that they're releasing. We get to see um, Lightning McQueen back. I actually, like, I always like Lightning McQueen. I love like, when we see him on screen. We see he has the same design. We see he has his, like, his titles on the side of his car and everything. And then we're introduced to two other cars. The other car is Jackson Storm. It's like a black and blue race car, a black and blue car. It's actually my favorite of the two new cars they displayed. And then we got Cruz Ramirez. Cruz Ramirez is like an all yellow Camaro. I definitely dig the um, black and blue car, Jackson Storm, a lot better. And I don't, I don't know how they're going to play. I love how they show different roles. Because Lightning McQueen is obviously, when you look at the stats on display with the pictures, you'll see Lightning McQueen is actually the slowest of the three cars. And he's basically outmatched by these new, like the new millennial cars, basically. And it's cool to see that. I love how they did the trailer to be like a car, um, kind of like a car auction. You see they come in, we get the full, um, we see the wheels, we hear the, um, the engine revving. We get to go around the um, car, do a little aerial view of it. It's a great trailer. It reminds me of a showroom, like a showroom display. Pretty great picture, but it's like trailer beside. Besides that, we don't see anything else. Now, that's really all we have for this car's like, story. I'm definitely probably going to check that out. I actually do like Disney films, the Disney slash Pixar films. So I've seen all the other um, cars. I haven't seen any of the plane movies, but I've seen all the car films. So... Definitely gonna go check this out. I still love number one. Number two, I could go uh, uh, back and forth. But number three, I'll be there. I like how they introduce these new cars. Definitely gonna check that out. Now, our final story is the story that I'm most excited about. Now, like I said, I'm a big Disney fan. I even have like Little Mermaid tattooed on me. So this film, as soon as I seen like this trailer for this film, it blew me away. I couldn't wait to like, <clears throat> to like, oh my God. Oh, this is amazing. Like the lore, the final story of the day is the lore. So the lore, Lisa Trader is due out February 1st in New York. It's going to come out in New York first. Once it comes out in New York, it's going to nationally, it's planning to nationally expand throughout the U.S. The biggest issue that's going to turn a lot of you guys off is, it's not in English. There's going to be a lot of subtitles. But going through the trailer, it's going to so it's going to be a horror musical. Doesn't sound like it goes together, but it's going to be a horror musical. I'm definitely checking this out. I'm not even the biggest horror fan, but I'm a big Disney fan. So I love mermaids. Um, what else? What else is it? Mermaids. We actually got man-eating mermaids. They have like, the voices of sirens, so they're singing. So there's about two twin sisters, I think they're twin sisters, twin, uh, sister mer mermaids. They are kind of entranced with the earth lifestyle. So they go out the, um, the water, the land lifestyle, whatever you want to call it, because obviously they're, they're mermaids, they're from earth also. But they go onto the land, and it's supposed to be for um, an 80s Poland, like alternative 80s Poland um, era. And it look, this film looks amazing. We see mermaids eating people. We see mermaids singing. We see, um, oh, these are not the Disney mermaids you're used to. Oh, they're not. Um, it's an amazing poster. I don't know how to explain it. This is like, I'm definitely going to be there. Like I said, I'm excited. I'm definitely going to be there. There's, oh, I can't wait for this to expand out to the West Coast. <sighs> Bro, this is, this is not the Disney film. This is not the Disney mermaids. And I can't wait to see them. And I forgot what language the film is in. It doesn't really matter because I can't speak the language anyway. So the film is going to have subtitles. If you don't like, if one of those people don't like subtitle films, you're not going to go check this out. But I think you should give it a try. Even though the music is not in English, 
it sounded good to me when I was in the trailer. The trailer was pretty flashy. You see, it was dark but colorful. I don't know how to explain it. It was like really dark but really colorful. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait for this film to come out. February 1st cannot come quick enough. I cannot wait. Um, that's our last story of the day. Thank you guys for tuning in as always. Make sure you check us out on Facebook, Instagram. We're coming up with a merch page pretty soon. The shirt, the Lost Culture shirt. If you like it, you can be on, be able to sell, buy one. And thank you guys for tuning in. As always, stay lost.